What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Learning Roblox Studio series. In today's video, we're going to be going over the Fading Trap chapter. As always, if this video does help you guys out or you guys do enjoy it, make sure you smash the like button and turn those post notifications on if you guys want to get notified every single time I upload a brand new Roblox development video. Additionally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me or gain access to scripts that I make in a lot of my other videos, there's a link down below in the description. You guys can go check it out and support me if you're feeling so kind. The final thing is that I will leave a link down below in the description to the documentation from the official Roblox development website that we're going to be covering today if you guys like to follow along and view the text on that website you guys definitely can otherwise enjoy the rest of the video and let's get into it so fitting trap getting started in deadly lava which was the last episode we learned how to trigger code based on the player's behavior this course will show you how to make a platform which fades away when the player steps on it setting up if you follow the deadly lava course you can place your fading platform above the lava floor either way it should go over a space that the player cannot jump across so what i'm going to do is i'm going to load up the last place that we made which is still from spanning from the very first chapter that we worked on and we're going to go from here so previously i believe in the first or the second chapter we actually made the disappearing platform and it's pretty nice and we can actually use it for this exact thing but i guess since their instructions say to insert a part i'll just do that again just to show you guys the process once again to hopefully help you guys learn and memorize it so we're going to insert a part and we're going to go to the workspace we're going to click plus then we're going to click part and then that's actually like perfect in the position wise anyway so we're going to stretch it out a little bit just like that make it a little bit wider make it a little bit bigger see if that jump is possible which it definitely should be i think that's pretty good we're going to go down to the properties and we are going to make sure that we set anchored to true so that it doesn't fall down and we are also going to rename the part to fading platform and now that looks pretty good. And right below it, we still have the deadly lava. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to insert a script directly into the fading platform part. And then we are going to name it fade on touch. And then we're also going to remove the print statement as well. So now what we're going to do is we are going to create a variable for the actual fading platform part. So we're going to say local platform equals, and then we are going to do script.parent to get the fading platform part. Then we're going to create a blank function. So we're going to say local function, and the name of the function is going to be fade. Then we're going to hit enter that will create the end right there below us and we're going to leave it like that. Now, the final thing that we're going to do for right now is we're going to get the platform and then we're going to get the touched event and we're going to connect that to the fade function, which we did in the last episode. And we learned about this in the last episode. So we're going to use the platform variable. We're going to find the touched event and then we are going to semicolon connect that to the fade function just like that. Perfect. Fading the platform. Having the platform vanish in an instant would be no fun at all. Players would find it impossible to get across the gap. It would be better if the platform could fade away before the player would fall through it to give them a chance to jump off. You can change the transparency property and wait a very short time over and over and over again to get this effect, but a gradual fade would require at least 10 changes between 0 and 1. That's 20 lines of very repetitive code. If you're unsure what they mean by that, I just create an example of exactly what they're talking about. So what they mean by the repetitive code is basically this. You would change the transparency, then you would wait a couple of seconds or even half of a second, then you would set the transparency to 0.9, then wait again, then 0.8, then wait again, then 0.7, and then it would keep going all the way down to 0.1. That's very repetitive, and we don't want to write it this way because that's really bad when you're coding. There's a much simpler way to do this, and it's going to be so nice when we actually figure out how to do that. So the fade can actually be achieved much more efficiently by using a for loop, which repeats code a specific number of times. Each loop of the code is known as an iteration. A for loop is defined with three things things separated by commas. For a for loop, we first say for to indicate that that's a for loop. Then we have a control variable, which is the count equals one. Then we have a comma. Then after that, we have 10, which is when the actual for loop will end. And then after the 10, we have another comma, and then we have one, and then finally we have do. The control variable is the variable created and used to count the loops. In this example, it's count, and the starting value is one. The end value, the value it has to get to the loop for it to stop. In this example, it's 10. So count equals one, meaning that this loop is going to start at one, and then we're gonna go all the way up to 10, and we're gonna end at 10. Then the step increment, which is actually optional, determines what to add to the control Control variable each loop. If left out, it actually defaults to one. So in this example, it's unnecessary. So what that means is every single time this loop goes through, count will actually increase by one. So count starts at one, then it'll go to two, then three, then four, then five. And once it gets to 10, it'll actually stop. Let's go back into the function and actually create a for loop. So we're going to say for count 
equals 1, meaning that this loop is going to start at 1, and then we're going to say what it's going to end at, which is going to be 10. Then just for this example, because I'd like to show you a little bit more about what the step increment actually means, we are going to do another comma and do 1, and this time we're going to say do, and then hit enter, and there is our for loop. Now, inside of this function, we are going to change the transparency of the platform. So we're going to say platform.transparency equals and now what we're going to do is we're actually going to divide the count by 10 so we're going to say count divided by 10 and the reason for that is because 1 divided by 10 would be 0.1 2 divided by 10 would be 0.2 and so on and that'll go all the way up to 10 which would actually equal 1 and that's exactly how we want the transparency to actually change and then finally we're going to say task dot wait and finally we're going to wait 0.1 seconds so when the loop actually runs count is increased by 1 with each iteration this means that the platform's transparency will be increased by 0.1 one every 0.1 seconds reaching full transparency after one second reappearing after the platform has vanished players should fall through it the platform should also come back a few seconds after it fades otherwise players would never get to try the jump again if they failed the can collide property controls whether players can fall through the part so now what we want to do is we want to actually set the can collide property of the platform to false after the for loop so let's go outside of the for loop but still stay within the function we're going to hit enter and we're going to say platform dot can collide equals false that will make the player actually fall through the platform then we actually want to wait three seconds before the platform reappears and then we want to make the platform reappear so we're going to say platform dot transparency and actually set that to zero so it's completely visible when the platform becomes invisible we set the can collide to false so that the players fall through so now that we set the false we need to make sure that we actually set that back to true otherwise players will still fall through it when the platform is visible so we're going to say platform dot can collide equals true so the players will no longer fall through it part two the bouncing in the deadly lava course Course, you learned that the touch event runs each time a player's body part comes into contact with the part. This behavior causes issue when a player runs across the fading platform. The function will run multiple times, resetting the loop every single time. Now, this might be a little bit confusing for you, but the reason that this happens is, let's say, for instance, that we actually jumped and fell into this lava. You might assume that your left foot or your right foot would be the first and only part to actually touch it because we then kill the player. That's actually not true. A lot of different parts on the character will touch this specific lava part. For instance, both of your characters feet will touch it so that's two parts and then additionally if any other parts or you have accessories or anything else like that those parts can also touch it as well when your player also dies all of your parts of your body or of your character sort of spread out so all those parts might touch the lava as well meaning a lot of different parts will actually touch one specific part although you might assume that only one part would touch it that's why we actually have to use debouncing so for the code to work properly the function should only run once when the player touches a platform for the first time ensuring that the action is only triggered once when it would otherwise be triggered triggered multiple times. This is known as the bouncing. The bounce variable. To debounce a function, a boolean variable can be used to keep track of when the platform has already been touched. Boolean just means that the value of the variable is only true or false. So for instance, can collide right here, the value of can collide can only be set to a boolean, which is either false or true. So we're already using booleans. You just might not have known the name. So what we're now going to do is we're going to create another variable outside of the function right below platform, and we're going to call that is touched, and that is going to be set to false. Next, we want to check the variable. An if statement can be used to only run the code in the fade function if is touch the bouncing variable is false. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap all the code inside of our function that we already have inside of an if statement. And the if statement is going to be if not is touched then. And then what I like to do, what the easiest thing in my opinion to do is just copy or cut all that code and then paste it back into that if statement. You can highlight all the code that you have and then hit control X to cut it. Otherwise you can highlight it, hit control C to copy it, then delete it and then paste it. Whatever you want to do, it all works perfectly. Negate operator. The loo and not operator reverses the value of whatever follows. It. In the conditional terms, this means that an if statement on the left behaves the same as either statement on the right. We can also then see the two if statement examples down below. On the left, it's says if not is touched then which also means the exact same thing as if is touched equals false or if is touched equals nil those are the exact same things as writing if not is touched i'll also demonstrate that here as well so we see if not is touched then we could also just write if is touched equals false then that's the exact same thing so this might be a little bit less confusing for you if you're confused by this toggling the debounce currently the code in the fade function will always run because is touched is false and not is touched evaluates the true. To complete the debounce routine, you'll need to toggle the variable's value in two places. So we're going to set is touch to true inside of the if statement before the platform begins to fade, and then we'll also set it back to false once the platform reappears. So inside of the if statement, when this first runs, we're going to set is touched to true. And then 
Once the platform finally reappears and the players can step on it again, we are going to set the is touched back to false so that players can touch it once again. And that's it. Test your code now and you should find the platform fades away when the player jumps on it and comes back a few seconds later. So let's go ahead and try this out for ourselves. Let's go ahead and start the game. Let's look over at our platform, run over to it, and then jump on it. And now we can see the platform slowly fades away and we fall into our lava pit. Now, the only other thing that we have to wait for, but we already saw right there, is that the platform does reappear exactly how we want it to. Now let me hop off and then we can see that it fades away. And remember, one of the issues that we were going to have without the debounce that we made is actually triggering this multiple times. So now we can see that works perfectly and we have no issues with it at all. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully this video did help you guys out. If it did, make sure you guys smash the like button. Also, if you guys are new around here and you guys want to see some more Roblox development content, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on as well. Additionally, I do a Patreon. If you guys like to support me, there's a link down below in the description. You guys can support me and gain access to a lot of the scripts that I make in my other videos. Anyway, with that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video.